and talk about how I am shining and cleaning my plants' leaves, my house plants' leaves. I just did my fiddle leaf, my big fiddle leaf fig, um, and it's looking great. I'm so glad that I'm doing this. Uh, now I'm indoors a lot. I look at these plants a lot. I'd rather look at something shiny, and it's going to be a lot better for the plants. Keep them clean. Keep the surfaces of their leaves. Uh, you know, clear of a lot of debris. We have a lot of dust in the house, especially because we're doing a lot of construction downstairs. It just seems to be never ending the amount of dust that piles up and very quickly, especially because it is winter now. There's a lot less sunlight. It might look bright in the video, but it's actually really dark and gloomy today. Um, so getting rid of that layer of dust, you know, will maybe help just even a little bit them to get more sunlight to, you know, make that energy that they need to produce. So I mixed a half a cup of milk and a half a cup of water, and this is what I'm going to use to polish my leaf. I like it because it gives them a good shine. I think the fats and the proteins in the milk, this is 2% um, lactose-free <laughs> milk. I don't, I'm hoping the lactose-free part um, is okay, but I know that you know, the milk and fats and the proteins does help to uh, break down some of the stuff on the plants. With my ficus trees, I already have, you know, this leaf that's broken and there's some sticky stuff coming out, um, a couple of leaves. This plant is like by the doorway, so it gets to the brunt of my dog's tail <laughs> when he's really happy and excited to go outside. So it's always shaking and yeah, it's gotten quite burnt or quite bent up. So I'm going to try not to get that um, sap on my hands. It is kind of an irritant. I hope that this cleaning will just help it look a lot better. It probably doesn't look so bad on camera, but to me in real life, it's not the best. So yeah, I'm just dipping my microfiber cloth into this. This is kind of a one that I use for my plants anyways, or to clean up the surfaces that I'm working on when I plant. Um, I gave it a good rinse before I started doing this, and I'm just gonna, you know, gently hold the leaf and go over it. I'm also gonna go over a little bit on the underside. So on the top side of leaves, it's where they are gonna mostly be getting in all of that light. It's They angle it towards the light so they can get better ones. So getting the dust off of there helps um, for the plant to get more light, but off of the bottom, plants have um, these pores on the underside of their leaves, mostly on the underside of their leaves. I think it's all over the plant, um, and that just helps them to respire, to breathe, if you will. So I, I do wanna go um, over the bottom a little bit too and just get the dust off. There is kind of a brown edge to this leaf. And I'm not sure, sometimes the brown spots on leaves can be sign of bacterial damage. Um, so I do wanna be wiping these clean. I don't wanna leave too much moisture on the leaf. Um, and I'll go over this. Sometimes when I'm doing this with the milk and water mixture, it leaves like little drops and it kind of dries out of milk, <laughs> like white, white drops. And that doesn't look great aesthetically. So I'm just also, when I'm done with this, I'm done going over all the um, my house plant leaves. I'll go over again with just a water solution. I'll wring this out and just, um, um, you know, with a damp towel, just try and get all of that extra excess milk off. Such a shame. This is a beautiful leaf, but it is like bent in half right in the middle. And I think the first couple of times I did this, I was really careful with the leaves. If your plants aren't that healthy, there's something, an issue with them, their leaves will be more likely to fall out. At, like when you touch them, they're much more brittle and they just break off easily. But I am a lot more confident about it now. Um, and I don't need to handle them so gingerly. And I think, you know, they are doing healthy, even though this plant is beaten up. <laughs> I think it's been doing well. It's been putting out new leaves and such. The newer leaves are definitely shiny and don't really need to be cleaned up as much. I'm just go going to, I think, 
When you do it with milk, it also does kind of put on this glossy protective layer over the leaves, which is nice. And it keeps it looking glossy for a decent amount of time. Right now it looks kind of glossy because it's wet, but um, it, it'll just look kind of shinier even when it dries off. over I'm gonna do I'm gonna do all of my house plants today but I'll also show you the things that I think need it the most at least for you know my um, viewing pleasure are the ones with big leaves so my ficuses um, my you know the rubber house plants ficus elastica um, my fiddle leaf fig tree I forget <laughs> what the name is ficus something I'll remember it soon enough um, and then these ZZ plants, they, I just love them. I love anything with thick glossy leaves, so I'm going to try and keep them as glossy as I can. And it might have been a good idea actually for me to rinse this cloth out before I used it again or to get a new one. I have a bunch of these. Um, if you are worried about, you know, spreading any bacterial disease from plant leaves, especially if you have, if you're doing it on a lot of the same type of plant and they're kind of less resistant to that, you know, type of disease that's already on one, you, you might want to in between your cleanings, just get a new rag or um, throw this in the wash. So other things that you can um, clean your plant's leaves with are, you can do just water. Some people use coconut oil, but I think that does definitely leave a lot and I don't want to cause any issues. I feel like that leaves a very thick layer that might cause, you know, more bacterial damage or clog up a bunch of the pores. So I, yeah, I prefer this. You can use um, a gentle dish soap. So like the, the Dr. Bronner's Castile soap, that works well if you do a mixture with water, just a light mixture, and that works well to clean. Again, I prefer this and I always have milk on hand. We eat a lot of cereal here in this house, so there's always milk around. So I'm definitely going to do my citrus trees. These newer leaves um, are pretty shiny, not so dusty, but these smaller older ones could do with a good shining. You know, every just little thing that I could do for this plant, I'm going to try and do. So another one of the plants that I really wanted to do this on was this orchid. So this orchid, um, one of my friends left here. Um, she can always come by and take it back. Uh, it was left outside, I, I don't know. I repotted it, um, cut off the stem, and now some new blooms are growing. And definitely I've been noticing this. these leaves collect a lot of dust in the house. So I'm very happy to go ahead and polish this off. I do also have something that one of my other friends <laughs> dropped off separately, even though I didn't have an orchid before, some orchid food, some spray food, and that does go on like the foliage and the exposed roots. So I think it is pretty um, important for the health of this plant that 
their leaves kind of remain clean and don't have so much junk and dust building up on top of it. So much better. Um, I'm gonna let it dry off and then give it one more wipe with just water so none of this um, milky residue stays on. And then, yeah, I think I'll be good. I'll see if any of my other plants need anything. You know, maybe that snake plant in the back. But the aloe plant, I don't think I'm gonna do. It does have sort of a film on top of it, um, naturally. I started an amaryllis bulb got this from Home Depot. I just wanted to have something. I'm really itching to grow some things so I might honestly and I've been propagating Cuban oregano more of it. I have a bunch more going on. So yeah yeah I've just been having this itch to grow some more lately. I think I'm gonna start my viola seeds very soon, my annual violas, um, and have them ready and blooming by hopefully the end of March. Um, by that time they might be able to go outside, but at the very least, they can go in the high tunnel. I have a bunch of containers in there, so they can just stay in the containers until they're ready to go out. I don't think I'll have, I'll want to use the floor space really for the violas and not in the hoop house. So definitely there's a lot of places to have them outside. So I just want it to be, you know, the first earliest impact. I'm already done. It's only the end of November and I'm already done with winter. It's just so cold. It's in the single digits now um, and it is going to get warmer it's just a cold spell but it's seriously not doing any favors for my mood so i'm gonna do things to change that thanks so much for watching bye